This is Cheney Hall in Manchester, Connecticut, 2020. But in 1918, it looked a lot different. The Spanish flu was ravaging the world, affecting one in four people. With no hospital nearby, civic leaders and the head of the Red Cross, a Mr. C. Elmore Watkins, got together to create an emergency hospital right here. It was the community coming together to care for the community. It was the seeds of our region's very own hospital, a glimpse of our future. What better stage from which to tell the history of Manchester Memorial Hospital at 100? As the pandemic subsided and World War I ended, civic leaders met to discuss building a war memorial. Mr. Watkins suggested it be a hospital. On Armistice Day in 1920, Manchester Memorial Hospital was dedicated to the 45 Manchester men who lost their lives in the war. From the beginning, the hospital had visionary leadership. Most notably, perhaps, was Ms. Hannah Momgren. I arrived in 1922 by way of Fordham Hospital in New York City. I was to be the new superintendent at the community hospital in Manchester. Now, I'm sure that there were many who called me strong-willed back then, but I make no apologies. We set out to build the strongest foundation. We established the highest standard of hospital operation, and we settled for nothing less. And of course, it worked. We started to attract some of the top physicians in the country, and within a year, we gained full accreditation from the American College of Surgeons. This was almost unheard of for a small hospital. The very notion of hiring a woman to lead a hospital was quite progressive at the time. But in the decades that followed, extraordinary progress would be a defining characteristic of our hospital. One of Ms. Momgren's lasting contributions was establishing the Women's Auxiliary. It was the right arm of the hospital and the epitome of community involvement. Over the next 93 years, the Auxiliary and other donors would provide countless volunteer hours and raise millions for new equipment, services, and facilities. In the next 40 years, the cheery little medical home in Manchester grew dramatically, increasing capacity five-fold, from 50 beds to 274 beds by 1959. We would not be who we are today without the vision of early physicians, board members, and committees. And the entire hospital world wouldn't be where it is today without us. There was much talk at the time of a better mousetrap, a new way to operate a hospital. Progressive patient care, it was called. I traveled to this small hospital along with 200 others from across the globe to observe that model at work it was a simple idea, but a brilliant one. Classifying and separating patients according to the progression of care needed. Intensive care units, step-down care, commonplace today, but bold ideas at the time and quite polarizing. But Manchester Memorial Hospital proved it could work like countless others from 22 states and 16 nations, I returned home with a view to set up the Manchester plan of progressive patient care in our own hospital. A remarkable contribution to medicine by Manchester Memorial Hospital. And it would not be their last. Childbirth is a joyous human family event. And not a medical or surgical one. Turning those words into actions, Manchester Memorial Hospital boldly introduced family-centered childbirth to the United States in 1969. 
We were also among the earliest proponents of the Lamaze method for natural childbirth and the first hospital in the country to offer specially designed Lamaze rooms. The hospital continued to receive national attention. We even caught Hollywood's eye. The feature film Promises in the Dark, starring Marsha Mason and Ned Beatty, was shot right here. Through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, growth continued. Milestones came rapidly. We expanded our free community education programs, focused on prevention, wellness, and support. We gave hospital food a good name with a unique approach to patient dining, including Lobster Night. Hospitals worldwide were studying our menus. In 1983, we helped create a town-wide emergency medical system, leading to a new paramedic service. Prescription 84 was the largest building project in the hospital's history. Among other things, it strengthened our growing commitment to mental health. In 1985, Prompt Care was born, one of the few hospital-based walk-in centers in the state. We launched corp care and school-based care, improving access for thousands. In 1992, we opened a unique health resource just for women, the Center for Women's Health and Development. Hannah would be proud. And in 1995, we got company. To respond to the new managed care environment, we merged with Rockville General Hospital to form Eastern Connecticut Health Network. At the turn of the millennium, our hospital became one of the region's most formidable cancer fighters. The John A. DiQuattro Cancer Center is a cancer program second to none. The most amazing piece of technology at the Quattro Cancer Center, it's the least advanced. It's a bell. A simple bell that hangs by the lobby. But ringing it means that you've completed your cancer treatment. I got to do that. I was one of the first patients to do it. Surrounded by my doctors, my wife, my daughter. I rang that bell and I rang it hard. It's the sweetest sound in the world. The Quattro once again proved that Big city hospitals don't have a monopoly on high tech. In a few years, this amazing place will earn the Commission on Cancer's highest honor. The 2000s saw great changes in healthcare delivery, but also great achievements. A Gold Plus Award from the American Heart and American Stroke Associations, their highest honors for stroke care. We introduced robotic-assisted surgery, years ahead of several larger hospitals in the state. Then, PET scanning, positron imaging tomography. We scored in the top 5% of hospitals nationwide for having the lowest mortality and complication rates. We received honors for pulmonary excellence, our diabetes self-management program, our sleep disorders laboratory, and more. The hospital became the first medical teaching site east of the river and continues to be a leader in developing the region's healthcare professionals of tomorrow. ECHN became the official sponsor of the Manchester Road Race. The hospital supports many community events, but this one, we've been running with since 1927 which leads us to today. In a way, it feels like a hundred years ago. I was just two years on the job when COVID hit. They try to prepare you for everything in school, but well, you know the rest. I think the thing that got me through it was everyone around me. Nurses never give up on their patients, on each other. It was very simple to us. People need care. Our job is to provide it. We will show up. We will do whatever it takes, however long it takes. This has always been the spirit of Manchester Memorial Hospital. From 1920, to 2020. 
from pandemic to pandemic. When the community needs us, we answer the call. Sometimes just by being there with simple compassion. And sometimes by doing something so progressive, the whole world takes notice. But always, because community is not just who we serve, it's who we are. And who we've always been for 100 years.